What happens to a Jehovah's Witness who decides to go to another church to attend meetings there? He will be disfellowshipped. That means all his friends and family will shun him and will not even so much as say a casual hello should they pass him on the street. Now you might object and ask, but isn't that violating the law about freedom of religion? Yes, I'm sure it is, but they have a workaround in the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses. They will not say that a person has been disfellowshipped, but only that they have disassociated themselves. It's a little play with words to get around the problematic law of the land when it comes to restricting freedom of religion. You see, they reason that the person has left of their own accord and has not been cast out. No one is denying the right of any organization to revoke the membership of any individual member who chooses to join a competing organization. However, Jehovah's Witnesses go beyond merely revoking one's membership by forcing the entire worldwide witness community to consider the person as a pariah, one who is so bad that they cannot even be spoken to. Any person who is cast out of the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses is considered to be bound for eternal death. They will not survive Armageddon should it come in their lifetime, nor will they be resurrected if they die before Armageddon. So disfellowshipping someone, even if you call it disassociation, is a life and death matter in the mind of Jehovah's Witnesses. But what happens if a person doesn't join another religion, but merely wants to study the Bible with a group of friends that is in no way connected with any church or religious organization. Surely a community like Jehovah's Witnesses that urges people to read the Bible daily would have no problem with an independent Bible study group. After all, they would never want to be compared to Catholics who in the Middle Ages banned the use of the Bible, who even went so far as to burn people at the stake for possessing a Bible. Surely witnesses would not condemn someone to eternal death for studying the Word of God. I attend several Bible study groups every week. These groups are not affiliated with any church or religious organization. They are comprised mainly of Jehovah's Witnesses and former Jehovah's Witnesses, as well as others who just love Bible reading and studying the Bible together and discussing it enjoying the mutual nourishment that comes from such an interchange of encouragement. I consider these people to be my spiritual brothers and sisters. One of them, Diana, was recently disfellowshipped from the Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses for attending one of these Bible study groups. I'm now going to play the recording of her judicial hearing because it exposes the hypocrisy of an organization claiming to be the one true religion God is using on earth to spread the good news of the kingdom. We have an audition tonight, so maybe to get things started, we would like to get the whole uh, spirit on our meeting. So maybe Brother Ross, would you like to do that for us, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Jehovah God, our Creator, we thank you very much for every opportunity that we have to learn about you. We thank you, Jehovah, for sending your son. Uh, what a beautiful role he plays in your organization and in your purpose. And we pray that uh, all of us can work hard to imitate him, to do our part too in, in uh, understanding uh, everything involved. You know, Jehovah, you, you have a full picture of things and you're so patient with us. But please help us tonight to uh, determine where everyone stands. We pray that by means of your spirit, we can uh, speak openly, and we pray you continue to guide your organization. So we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for the opening prayer, because and that's what our conversations have been, Jazz, uh, since that you're new to the meeting, that our conversations have been frank and open, and we've enjoyed uh, every minute of talking with Diana. Uh, she's been open in uh, expressing uh, some of our feelings, and that's that's her role on her part. So uh, thank you, Diana, for being so honest and, and frank with us. So uh, with that in mind, we won't expect anything less. Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. 
I wouldn't expect anything less in our conversation this evening. So the reason why we just called on another uh, a meeting was the last time that we spoke, and even the, the, the first time we spoke, I shared uh, with the body uh, some of the things that we had talked about. And interestingly enough, Diana, and which is which is part of their, their love and concern for uh, the sheep, uh, for is some of us just weren't convinced on um, you know why or how or what is it uh, that would 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 push you this far or to the point of you know not being either not being one of your witnesses, admitting you're one of the Jehovah's Witnesses, or desires to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, some of the brothers we, we're just not convinced of that, and, and which is a nice thing uh, yeah. because we know that it's true. Well. Right. It, right. It's it's not an easy thought, you know, to have. I mean, per, period. You know, it's it's a it's crisis like, of conscience for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and, and I know if you've had us some run-ins with the brothers in the past uh, here in this room, but they too. Yeah, they that's too yeah, that's not a problem. That's, okay. And they too feel the, the same way, you know. Um, so, what we probably want to establish this evening is um, your conviction. Where where are we at? Where are we really at? And so, Brother Ross had uh, because he hasn't been here in the last two meetings. He may even ask you some questions that I may have asked before, or Sky did may have asked before. So please forgive us. No, Sky but was too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We just want to establish some 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 background and some facts so that we know uh, how to deal with this very uh, sensitive subject. So, uh, if you don't mind, we're going to have uh, Brother Ross kind of ask you some questions, and and then we can kind of we'll go from there. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We um. So we're here tonight, Diana, because the body assigned the three of us just to make sure we have everything straight. It's um. We're sure you understand what a serious decision it is. Yes, I do. And so we don't ever, as a body, want you to feel rushed into that decision, and we also never want to misunderstand. So that's why, you know, Jesus is so loving as the head of the congregation that he makes sure the elders get things straight in their heads so there's no injustice. So I, I thought of a nice verse in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Okay. And uh, the whole verse doesn't apply, but just the first just the first sentence in the verse is what I was thinking of. Do you, do you want to read that first sentence in Isaiah 1, 18? Come now and let us set matters straight between us, says Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're here. We want to set matters straight, make sure we understand each other. And, you know, in the world, uh, it is so divisive. People can't even agree on what facts are facts anymore. And that's why there's no that's agreement. That's true. It's crazy out there, isn't it's it? very, <laughs> very crazy out there. And they can never come to an agreement because they can't even agree on what the truth is. But that's not how Jehovah is. Jehovah wants, and his son Jesus, uh, Jesus wants us to make sure we understand completely. And, and uh, you, I heard you say something just a few minutes ago. You mentioned it's a Crisis conscience of, is involved. Yeah, conscience. Yeah. Of, you have to have a clear conscience. You know, the... The, the congregation, the witnesses always say to look for honest people, people hungry for the truth, and humble people. So I think, I think where I disagree with the governing body is the truth. That's, that's my crisis in my head is that I, you know, I've, 
And I know a lot of other friends that always have, oh, well, you know, I don't really agree with this and this and this, but it's not, it doesn't take away from the big picture. And I've been that way for many, many years. I mean, I was baptized in 91. And I've talked to you before with, when you were with Craig, you know, my story yeah. coming into the truth. And uh, I remember about Patty, right? Patty, who died, yeah. And it was, yeah. oh, it's no big deal if you don't want to go door to door. And she wanted to give me a Bible study. And, you know, and then I was kind of confused when she came in. And I don't even recall what book we used, that's how much I was distracted because I I had just been laid off work, I was a new mom, I was trying to get a new job, but I do remember when, so in 91 and then, so just bef this was about the time I was going back to college to get my degree and I remember the brothers coming and being very, very concerned that I was going to college. And they they were trying to talk me out of it. And they never really pursued any action because I did go and I did graduate, but I wasn't encouraged. And that was probably maybe one of my first red flags because I didn't know about all of that with Patty. I mean, that that was stuff that wasn't scriptural. That wasn't stuff that was in the Bible. And so you let things go because it's not at that time important. And it really isn't because I'm a independent, stubborn woman and I do what I pretty much want anyway. <laughs> if it's logical and it makes sense, which at the time um, the witnesses were very much feel the need, you know, and it was... Um, Good for a while, and then I moved here, and thank goodness there was a small congregation at the time, and because the brothers were worried I wouldn't have um, association. But I don't even remember how many members. Probably twenty or so. I don't even remember. It was really it was pretty small. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you come from one that had to be split and sixty, maybe yeah. on a bad day, you know. So it was. It was a little different. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we understand. And, and you know, Diana, I can think of times in the past that um, sometimes I had disagreements, even with those in the congregation. And sometimes about things that weren't scriptural. Sometimes there were personalities that clashed. Or sometimes um, brothers or sisters can make statements that they say are based on the scriptures, which may not be. I think that's that's happened to me in the past, and it can be it can be um, it can be disturbing at times. Yeah, well, I can yeah. I can forgive the yeah. brothers and that, but when it's the the governing body, I have I take issue with that. Most is there? This is a question I want to ask you: Is there a certain decision or a certain time or something with the governing body that 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 thought first occurred? Um. <laughs> When I watched the, one of the, well, it was over the, the overlapping generation. Mm. And to me, why not just say, we got it wrong. We, we got it wrong. The information that we received in, enlightened from Jehovah, we were wrong. But it's like they they maneuver or manipulate and cherry pick scriptures to suit what they feel is the new light you know the king of the north king of the south the new gen the overlapping generation um the the time that oh the pyramid the sphinx can't be that old 2500 because the flood would have destroyed it i'm like because I, I, I didn't really study a lot of archaeology, but I'd always be interest, been interested in geology and archaeology. And that blew my mind, too, is don't we have the, the, the days in Genesis figured out that it's just a space holder? It isn't a set time. And, you know, and 
I don't know. There, that wasn't the biggest thing. But, you know, when I, I came across in my studies of, if I can share a scripture with you, in Deuteronomy 18.22, it says, when the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled or does not come true, then Jehovah did not speak that word. And so I just feel like the governing body, uh, I don't know, it, I don't want to really badmouth them all, but I just, I just don't feel that we're, giving, we're being given accurate information. And I've just seen a change since I started into the truth when the focus was a lot of scripture and a lot of loving your neighbor and Jesus has died for our sins and we love Jehovah with all our heart and he has a name and spread it to everybody that you know and things like that. But now it's, oh, be prepared for doomsday. We're all going to die. Be thankful you're not the world that will burn up like a match and go into smoke. And people chuckle and think it's funny. And I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just having a very difficult time that when they come across as very judgmental, thinking that, well, if you're not in our organization at Armageddon, you're just going to go poof like that. Because I think there's honest-hearted Christians in many, many of the different churches. I don't think, I'm just to the point in my mind where I don't think a religion is the answer, where the Bible is more the answer. Scripture is the answer. I've always wanted to know what the Scriptures and the Bible says. Yeah. Well, thank you for expressing that. So that, that's where I am, Chaz. I mean... I, yeah. I don't want to cherry pick a scripture to make it fit. You have to have it in context. You have to know the setting. Why, why is Paul talking to Corinthians and saying, you know, if, if you look into a mirror, and back then it was metal, and shiny as they could get it, and you still won't have all the information, it will be dim. That's why he talks about a mirror. You know, and just to understand it, all of that kind of stuff, that, that's what fascinates me, and that's what I want to share with people. Not that, oh, you need to join this organization to be saved. Because to me, that's not what saves you. Jesus okay. saves. The way to get to Jehovah is through his son, Jesus Christ. And to have leaders and elders that help us understand that information yay but when they when they try to change what they've said in the past constantly throughout a hundred and what forty some odd years rather than just say oh we got it a little wrong nobody knows the day and time so we're not going to even worry about it anymore <laughs> Be done with it. No, Let's put our thanks, efforts thanks. into Ramapo and get that finished, and then that'll be 2025, and then maybe maybe then the end will come. Who knows? But yeah. in the meantime... I, I remember you thinking, you mentioned Lord Conscience. So since since you met with Al and Sky... So guys, that? real quick, yeah. uh, we will get cut off in a minute or two. You guys know the routine. Oh, yeah. But okay. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, Sky. So Chaz... Because I'm on the uh, the low budget, the Zoom, probably get cut off in a bit. Well, I, I have an account, Al, if you want to use it. Um, that can make you host and everything. That's fine with me. Uh, uh, well, I mean, how do you guys feel? Do you want to use another number or just, re, just get back if on? If you want to say it now, I'll write it down. I don't care. Yeah, that way there's no time limit. You don't have to start and stop. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ready. Okay. Go ahead. I'll text it to you, uh, Alan Sky, too. Okay, thank you. Um, All right, so let's see. Oh, I was going to ask you, Diana. So you mentioned that it, the conscience back and forth. Have Have you felt any back and forth since you met on Friday with in your in your conscience on what you told the brothers then? Where are you tonight? Well, <clears throat> Alan and I talked at well, Sky listened and. You know, it was 
I was asked if I still wanted to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's a pretty cut and dry question and leaving really no squiggle room. And so I said, well, I guess, you know, if nothing changes, then I guess I honestly would not be a good representative of Jehovah the way that it's set up now. Because I I could not in good conscience go to the door and try to give watchtower information versus sharing the gospel of Jesus. Mm, I see. Okay. And that's an important question because there's a difference between being an active member of the congregation, which would include commenting and field service, Versus disassociation, which, which is essentially the same as disfellowshipping arrangement. So that's a big difference, right? Well, it is, and it, and to me, it's very unloving because I would always love the people, but to be able to not say hi in public is very unloving, and to me, it's very unchristian-like. But that's the way the society has set it up, and. What choice do I have? You know, it's not like, not like I can go and talk to my Mormon neighbor and have great conversations because I was baptized a Mormon at eight. It's not like I can, can't say hi to another Christian when I was baptized at 25 into a Bible church accepting Jesus. But it is different because when I'm baptized in 91, uh, because I believe in Jesus, but I also have to accept the membership of Jehovah's organizations. And I think the questions nowadays, if I were asked the questions for baptism, Chaz, I wouldn't have ever gotten baptized. Mm -hmm. I would not have, because I don't agree with their... um, interpretation of being scripturally divorced. I think you can should be able to get divorced if you're in an abusive relationship. Um, there, you know, if you went down all those, I don't know, what are there, nine, ten questions now for baptism? I don't think I would have been baptized. Now, would, a, would I have been a presence at the halls listening to talks and things? Probably. Because back, I've never really been a zealous, active witness. You know, okay. I never, yeah. I never really have. I've, ha- I put my hours in, and I've, I felt like that was a bothersome conscience too. Because, you know, I go to different counties and schools, and there, people, and there'd always be an opportunity to talk. Um, religion and about Jehovah outside of the classroom or something like that and and I did and I kind of said well I probably put this many hours and I was turning in time for that and you know I'd, I'd have some sisters ask ask me to go in field service which I did my last time out was with Danae I think it was uh before it was probably 2016 17 around memorial time and so I I made an effort I was on the theocratic school for a while and you know I I pretty much did all of the suggested I don't know how to say it um, requirements to be a good witness (laughs) I never really felt the Christian love I never really did so. Okay, uh, can I just ask a question? And we maybe covered it either our first or second visit, but you know, you know, well, you're well aware of there's some questions that you need to answer before you baptize. Yeah. Can I ask what what the drew you to to study to the point of getting to the questions and getting baptized? What was it about the organization? What was it about your study conductor? or your, your, your beliefs that even got you that point, Dana? So I come out, I had just lost um, the pastor of the Bible church because that was something he just did on the side, and he 
he couldn't um, have his meetings anymore. It was, I mean, we met at a hotel room and thing. It was just always about the Bible, and um, he'd always go back to the Greek and the setting and things like that for the scriptures. But but then when he he even married me with my ex husband and. And uh, so when he left, I I didn't really have anything, and, and then I went through divorce. I was pretty well floundering at the time, and just kind of playing pool with Patty and doing working and stuff, at dancing. Those were the disco days. <laughs> so <laughs> so we just go dancing. It wasn't any big deal. I never got together so. with guys or did anything like you know, nasty, nasty stuff, but when Patty left, she was our team captain, and she left and offered a Bible study, and, and when I was studying, I went to a meeting, and I was impressed, no one took credit for a song, because I always thought that was kind of um, boasting that they always had that in the Mormon churches, you know, that so-and-so wrote this song, and yeah, 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 I don't know, it's just a little thing, you know, just little things. And yep. they and when I was first studying and went to meetings, they'd always talk about the Greek, going back in the Greek, and this is what it would say in the Watchtowers and Awakes. I love the Awake magazine. Love the Awake magazine. Now they're even cutting back on that. And uh, I, the Watchtower was always so uplifting and upbuilding and happy mm-hmm. and make you feel good and and. I don't know, just over the years it just seemed like it was getting, shifting the focus from what I considered good news of God's kingdom and and His Son Jesus Christ to more work, get out there, doomsday's coming, surround the corner, be prepared, you're going to die. Ah, soldiers with machine guns, ah, you know, don't say anything, be prepared to be thrown in jail, ah. You know, and and there was no way I was going to be happy leaving a meeting, you know, and be in some of the talks just sounded very judgmental. And I just, I don't know, I I guess I just just got turned off. I just got, yeah, I just got disappointed in the Mm. lack, the the apparent lack of love, of Christian love. That's all. So, yes. So if I can just spend a minute or two, um, maybe you know, or let the brothers know, it's funny. So here, uh, Diana is baptized in 91, but it was through the 80s. Am I correct? It was through the 80s that you felt this this attachment, this loving organization, this this truth through watchtowers and awakes. It was only a and, couple of years, yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's funny you say that because... When they were trying to study with me back in the 80s, so I was baptized in 91 too. Oh. Yeah, November 14, oh. 1991. That was July. But prior to that, Diana, and prior to that, brothers, I was afraid to get baptized. So <laughs> I was afraid to, to die because that's the way it came across. It was like, hey, you either not get in this religion now or you're going to die. Oh. So that, that's why it's funny. You know, it's funny yeah. that, you know, it was after the 90s and the 2000s that it it seems to some that the message got harsher and the message got more rigid. Exactly. But it was like, in my experience, it was prior to that. It was mm. prior to that. It was about, I looked at it before as fear factor. Mm-hmm. You know, they're putting, they still me the fear so it was to get baptized. I remember one brother... Oh, he's a real good brother right now. He's a, he, uh, he said, Al, you're never going to get baptized. You just, you, you're not good enough. You're not, no way. This is not going to happen. You're never going to get baptized. Maybe that was one of the things that I was keeping in mind. And so I didn't. He was right. And this is early in the 80s. I didn't. There's a bunch of us that all kind of hung out. And maybe... 15, 20 of them, they got baptized. And I said, well, I miss this boat because I don't want to be like that. I, I, I'm i not going to serve a God out of fear. I'm not right. going to do that. I'm going right. to do myself. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and I did. I didn't find the truth until much later. 
uh, to the late 80s. And then I started to study. But it was not till 2000s. And then, Diana, I, I kind of agree with you about the, the similar teachings. But it was not till like the 2000s where, from my perspective or in my eyes, coming from that, that the organization has softened a bit mm. the message and, 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 and gravitating to more about, like you said, uh, uh, Jesus, you're right. We, we gravitated in the, in, in the late 90s and 2000s, gravitate to follow the Jesus example, Christ-like personality. All this stuff about follow Jesus, follow his ways, his attitude, and things like that. That's when things start to change for me. Mm-hmm. But they kind of softened things. And then the doomsday part mm-hmm. was more of, well, the time is short before that comes. So that's the way, you know, I perceive it. The time is short before that comes. It wasn't on, oh, it's the doomsday is is a is a tool to make me uh, uh, build my faith on. No. Right. It was to remind me, well, the devil has a remember of uh, Revelation 12, 12. The devil has a short period of time and he has a lot of anger. So to me, he's working on a short schedule and trying to cram in all that he can, designing this system of things his way so that we miss the Armageddon mark. To just just to distract us just a little so that we forget the times that we're living in. And fall, fall, fall away from serving Jehovah. So uh, that, that's interesting you say that. Yours was before, but mine was after. after. Yeah. yeah. So now, more than ever, since we've had now this broadcast, and I'm going to say the governing body, and I apologize if it's offending you. No, it doesn't offend me. It's just a sad thing. Uh, and more than ever, <laughs> I feel that they've taken the initiative to draw closer to us. I mean, before this, I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't know how much they were. I didn't know they were oh, yeah, organized sure. in New York. I didn't, we always saw pictures. But now we can actually we can feel them, but we can, we can see them. We can see the instructions. We can see the, the teachings. We can see, um, so to me, it's, it's just been the opposite for me. Mm. You know? Interesting. So, and, yeah, it's funny, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, different perspectives, kind of looking. Yeah. But yeah, what, what month or in uh, ninety one? July. It was at the convention oh, okay. in Ogden. Oh. Okay. I got baptized in a brother's backyard in a pool. Oh, there you go. Small guy. Well, I him. I was in front of everybody, so <laughs> we had we went to a swimming thank pool. You, they you. have a swimming pool off campus. It was the Weber State campus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the college. That's a big one. Wow, that's, that's yeah. cool. Chaz would know about it. I, I, I wouldn't know, but that sounds The big. D Event I, Center, yeah. Yeah, I got baptized there too. Did you? The Event oh. Center. There you go. Yeah. I thought, I thought I had a verse to, to look at, though, Diana. I'm going to look at this one. Um, it's at John chapter 6. And you might remember this chapter. Um, Jesus is pretty early in his ministry, and there are a lot of people following him. And then Jesus tells the group, see where it is, verse 56. In what chapter? Six? John chapter 6 and verse 56. Look what Jesus says here. He says, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood remains in union with me and I in union with him. Now, in the chapter, we see there were a lot of people in that group that they didn't know what he was talking about. A lot of people got offended. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people left. So do you think that if people could get offended and even confused by Jesus, a perfect man, do you think it's possible that the governing body could have that effect on people today at times, confused or even offended, not sure why they're, they're doing that. 
No, because, I mean, he went on later to explain it. You know, like in 60, the speech is shocking. Who can listen to it? But they go on, and if the, 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 the people that were following Jesus understood because he went on to explain it. Now the other non-Christians, the ones who were not listening to Jesus, probably thought the Christians were cannibals. You know? Yeah. That would but be shocking, right? It would be way shocking. I mean, you either had the pagans or you had the Christians. You never had, back in those days, agnostics or people that didn't care because they had a true worship of a god. And when Jesus came and said, you guys are worshiping, you know, Jehovah. I, am, I have come to you as... Jehovah as his son to believe and find a way to save you, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, if you just took that scripture, that would be shocking. But thank shocking, it, right? It would be shocking. Let's keep reading, though. Let's keep reading. Because you're right. That's not the end of the story. In verse 66, like you said, because of this, many of his disciples went off to the things behind and would no longer walk with him. Notice these were not... Mm -hmm. These were the people of the nations. Many of his disciples, Jesus' disciples, left. But what happened for the ones that stuck around and waited for more? Go ahead and read verse uh, 67 and 68. So Jesus said to the twelve, You do not want to go also, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go away to? You have sayings of everlasting life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Yeah. Wasn't that a beautiful example from Peter? See, mm -hmm. he heard something that did not make sense to him. He didn't have any more understanding than the rest of those disciples. Mm -hmm. But what did Peter decide to do? Did you notice? Yeah. He decided to stay because there was no where or no one to go to. Yeah. Now, I want to apply this, Diana, to the organization today. And, and I know it's not a direct connection, but let's just think it through. Um, Jehovah said that through his son Jesus, he would appoint a governing body. That's in the scriptures. There would be a governing body to be appointed. Do you remember the two words that he used to describe the slave? Yeah, so faithful one was faithful and discreet. Yeah. One was discreet. Mm -hmm. Faithful and discreet. But notice, there's not a third word that's perfect. And when we think about the governing body, they're like you and me. They're, they're made of dirt. <laughs> they have a background. They have a history. They have a culture they were raised in. And never once have they claimed to be perfect. And you will never hear that in a broadcast or in an article that we are perfect. But let's just think this through. Who else is there to go to? Do, do you feel like there's another organization that... No. Who else is there to go to? Jesus, the Bible. That's who I would go to. I would go to people, that Christians, that are like-minded and want nothing but scriptural food. And, that's and who oversees them? Nobody. Who oversees that? How do we know if they're giving direction? Where is this man's faith? It is placed entirely in men. To him, somebody needs to oversee things and somebody needs to give direction. So let's ask him, how does he know that the governing body is qualified? When witness elders start to reason this way, I recommend you use what I now call the Catholic Dilemma. Any time the elders talk about excusing the actions of the governing body, or remaining loyal to the governing body, or just waiting on Jehovah to fix anything that might be wrong, I recommend you restate whatever they have said, but substitute the Pope for governing body. You could ask, what if a Catholic priest, referring to the Pope, were to tell one of his parishioners exactly what you just told me? Why wouldn't that work? The elder might answer, well, that's different. And then you can ask, why is it different? 
What makes it different? Do not let them off the hook. Make them answer the question. Eventually, they will be forced to admit that the reasoning doesn't work in the case of a Catholic because Catholicism is a false religion. However, they don't think it applies to Jehovah's Witnesses because Jehovah's Witnesses are in the truth. Great. You've got them where you want them. Now ask them, how do we know Jehovah's Witnesses are in the truth? What is the standard by which we measure any religion to make sure that it teaches the truth? Based on Watchtower Publications. You see, this puts them into a dilemma because they can hardly say that the standard by which they measure Catholics or Baptists or Adventists or any other church doesn't work for Jehovah's Witnesses, can they? If you get a truly sincere body of elders, which is increasingly rare, you might actually get them to be willing to study the Bible with you and reason from it. In my case, I was very confident that I could prove all the doctrines of the organization from the Bible. It was only when I started to do that that I realized my faith had been placed in the teachings of men and not in those of God. We all get together on on Sunday and today we we discussed 1 Corinthians 12:12 12, 12, and we went into chapter 13 about the Christian love and and how well Christian 12:12 12, 12, it, it talks about how every member of your body has a function and just as the Christ's organization has specific skills that they can bring, even if it's an encouraging word or something, or a positive attitude or something to help the people. And one woman, she was, that was, it was an awesome thing about serotonin. Even the littlest thing like serotonin, the chemical, can help, and 95% of it's in the gut. And, you know, so everything, if, if you, even your eyelashes, if you didn't have one little thing, and I... I love that kind of talk. I mean, it brings, it makes me remember the scriptures and Jesus's, what he wants to say through his Paul or Peter or, you know, his word about what we need in our life, you know, to yeah. be together. There, there are, um, there's one that pays for the Zoom, but and he's had comments to say, oh, let's make religion. He said, we do that. We're back to where we were, square one, and what we don't want to do because it just it's this perpetual cycle. If you get into a religion, it's hard to be spiritual. And that's, that's how I feel. I see. So let, let's go back to that account in, in John. And just, just please let us know how you feel about it. I want you to know we will definitely respect your decision, whatever you decide. We're not trying to say that. But no, that's okay. Yeah, here's the question. Do you feel that if you were patient on the governing body, like Peter was patient on Jesus, and you had time and one of the brothers to help answer these doubts and questions, do you feel like that would help you to repair your relationship with the organization? Or do you feel like at this point, something else? If the, organ yeah. if the bo governing body could, you know, admit things when they're wrong, and then, yeah, I'd be fine with that. But they want us to take what they say at face value, and that's it. No questions. That's it. Those, these are the rules. You follow the rules. If you don't, then you're going to be talked to or something like that, you know. And, you know, that's another thing. That the scripture you brought out is a perfect one, 656. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood remains in union with me. And I feel that, you know, I, I have been, been denied that for 30 years. I have not been able to partake with fellow Christians the bread 
and the wine to show that I love Jesus. I have not been able to do that because that is just for the anointed. And I guess I don't believe that. I think that, you know, the early Christians, they met, met in households and they break well, bread and they drank wine and they talked about Jesus and the ministry in their little family groups. And I truly believe I've been denied that for so long. Okay. And I, you mentioned this other group you're meeting with on Zoom. I just had a few questions so we could clear it up. Um, do, the, do the meetings involve, like, song and prayer? Yes. And then a Bible discussion? Yes. And, and they even allow, they just, you raise your hand if you want to do prayer, and they even allow women to pray. Okay. And what about um, images like the cross nope. or pictures of Jesus? Nope. Anything like that? Nope. Because that, we don't worship idols. I mean, everything's scriptural. There's no loyalty to a country. There's no um, anything like that. No symbolism, no anything. It's just Bible study. Okay, and have, have, you, have you prayed as part of the discussion? I have not given prayer. I don't feel um, comfortable yet. I'm still in this turmoil, so... I have okay. not. Yeah, all right. But you have you have been, you know, you've listened to prayers and said amen yes. and got along through. They pray them. to Jehovah God and they thank them, pray for wisdom and, you know, Holy Spirit to understand the scriptures and in Jesus' name we pray. And they use Jehovah's name. All right. Okay, and then just a few other things with um, with the group you're meeting with. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't really know when you started. It seems like a few weeks or months you've been getting on Zoom. With. You know, I uh, probably a month. I I, pro- I found I found this on YouTube, and it just like poof. I honestly didn't search for anything because I was just watching things on, I don't know, how to build a castle and, you know, um, (laughs) because my daughter wants to go to France and they have this one they're building like the original way you would build a castle and it's supposed to be finished in 2028. And so, you know, just things and then you... If you've ever been on YouTube, they have little set things that they say, this is, you know, here, and it's not really recommended, but it's just things that pop up. And I looked at this, and it had JW on it, and I'm like, oh, what's that? And, you know, just, and then just things started snowballing. And yeah. So, okay. yeah. Can I- um, thanks for clarifying that uh, through those questions, Chaz, because uh, I wasn't clear on that a um, uh, couple of our meetings. But um, the JW, uh, these ones that you're uh, gathering with, are were they Jehovah's Witnesses or just just people from there? All over the world? There's a bunch. There's different different ones on YouTube, and um, some. Um, it's interesting. They have stories to tell. The one that I that has the Bible study, it's um, Babrorian net, and he he from Canada. He was an elder, and he served part. I mean, he was. I don't think he was quite a Bethelite, but he served in congregations in different languages and I mean he was high up there um, Mm -hmm. on the elder body for 40 years and then I guess there was something that clicked he said in 2012 and just they they say they're awakened that's the term they use they're awake and they Mm -hmm. and he felt the need to go online and start this Bible study and in, and anyone who's interested do it because so, 
There are a lot of ex-witnesses born into the truth or just have been in it and left that are so bitter and negative and spout mm -hmm. off negativities and become agnostic or atheists, and he didn't want to see that happen. And so he felt compelled to um, create this uh, cool. place where like-minded ones, I mean... There, there was probably 55, like Poland, Scotland, all these places. He even has one in Spanish, he does, and that has a lot of members. I guess there's so, a lot of silent... So the, the individual you're referring to, he's, so he's, he used to be one of Joe's innocents. Yeah, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see... Uh, where I'm meeting with a bunch of people who have the same ideas we've had, maybe previous thoughts about the organization and meeting together and, and having some bitterness. I, I can see how it could... Uh, yeah. He's up. very careful not to be um, judgmental or in any negativity on the organization at all. Not at all. He just wants to be as accurate as possible with the scriptures. You know, I mean, I, hey, Chaz, I hope I'm not going to go off track, but no, go ahead. In, the, in the first century, you know, Jesus had warned them about standing off from uh, his way of teaching, which is the apostasy that would begin. And you remember how the Apostle Paul, he wrote numerous letters to Timothy about when these things begin, uh, be very careful but be vigilant and stay the course. There was this particular letter that I enjoyed uh, in, in his letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul. And if we can read it together, for Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Okay. Would you like to read that, uh, Diana? Second so yeah. uh, chapter 4, 2 and 2. It says, Preach the word, be at it urgently in favorable times and difficult times. Reprove, reprimand, exhort with all patience and art of teaching. For there will be a period of time when they will not put up with the wholesome teaching. But according to their own desires, they will surround themselves with teachers to have their ears tickled. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Paul writes this to Timothy because the apostasy has not full blown developed yet. However, uh, Jesus, now in heaven, right, helps his apostles to appreciate that, guys, just as I had forewarned you before I left, I warn you again. And here the Apostle Paul tells Timothy that it's coming. And then he got full-blown by the time uh, the death of the last Apostle, uh, John. It was, it was in full-blown uh, right before he died. So when we look at Jehovah's love and care, and I don't think you would disagree with this because you guys use Jehovah's name in this group. When you look at Jehovah's love and care, doesn't it like a father uh, warns a child before he's heading the wrong way, even before he takes that false step? What do you think? A loving father or a caring father will talk to a child and say, hey, this, this attitude or this way of life you're heading, it's not going to last long. And eventually, you're going to get in trouble with it. Please stop. If it's the wrong thing, yeah. Right. So, I look at this letter to Timothy from Paul and saying the same thing. So Jehovah is trying to help the first century back then to say, hey, don't forget that will come men is going to take you away from my teaching. Be cautious, be wary, be alert. And then here comes 
Much later, after Jesus died, not long after he dies, Paul helped Timothy in telling him the same thing, that they were not put up with wholesome teaching or teaching from Christ, but according to their own desires. They will surround themselves with others who will tickle their ears. In other words, make them feel good, make them feel better about maybe some of the divisions or bitterness they may have about the teaching of Jesus. Is that interesting? It is. He claims that the apostasy was in full swing by the time John wrote the Revelation. I'm not surprised that he gets that wrong, given the poor level of scholarship that the rank and file are fed through the Watchtower study. Food at the proper time? More like pablum at the proper time, baby food. There was apostasy even before John, but it took a few centuries before it became pervasive. He jumps to the conclusion that our group is apostate and just tickling the ears. Let's read that verse again. For there will be a period of time when they will not put up with the wholesome teaching, but according to their own desires, they will surround themselves with teachers to have their ears tickled. We have no teachers in our group. We all read. We all comment. We all teach. There is no clergy class, as there is in all religions, including Jehovah's Witnesses with their governing body, legions of circuit overseers, and army of elders, all dispensing the message that all you have to do is remain loyal, donate, attend meetings, and you will survive Armageddon while the rest of the world burns. Really, whose ears are being tickled? To this elder, Jesus' teaching is the teaching of the governing body. To him, they are synonymous. But we know different. Jesus never taught about a group of Christians who were not to partake of the emblems representing his life-saving flesh and blood. He never taught that his disciples should look to be resurrected as God's friends. While still being burdened with sin, as the witnesses teach, he certainly never taught that he'd return invisibly in 1914. Yikes. And then, again, he gives us uh, this, uh, this stern warning in verse 5. Notice that. My phone went off. <laughs> so referring to the Christians... Oh. He tells this. Okay. You, though, keep your senses in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an, an evangelizer, fully accomplish your, accomplish your ministry. Right. So here he says, keep your senses. Endure what's going to come, because it's coming, and it's going to hit you hard. It's going to take you away from my teachings. But if you stay busy doing the work of an evangelizer or keep preaching, this will help you to keep alert, like to stay awake. And so the situation is similar to our day because let's face it and be honest with each other. There only has to be one road to salvation. Only right. one road. Right. Right? right. And Jesus talked about it. You know, one going one way, one going the other way. One is down and cramped, one is broad and spacious. So you know that there was only going to be one leading to everlasting life. Well, the way I, yeah. I see it is I have, I'm on a road and it splits, like you're saying. I have the governing body, the Watchtower organization over here. I have the Bible over here. Which way am I going to go? Like well, I'm going to go towards the Bible. That's how I'm viewing it right now. And, and I like it how you use that illustration that you came to a fork in a road and you made a choice. I did. I made a choice, Al. And it's not that, no, there, I just want to be clear there was, even though I have suffered some slander in the last two years, I am not doing this because of any. Um, person, I'm not doing this for any uh, negative talk about me or anything like that. Um, I'm doing this from research, and I shared with you what I found on jw.org. 
about salvation. I, I looked up the, the deity of Jesus, and it said, well, because we have to believe in Jesus, you know, we have to include Jehovah's name. And the way it, we have to believe in Jesus, we have to include Jesus, it, it just hit me wrong. Because that should be the first thing that Jehovah wants us to do is believe in his son in order to gain salvation through him and know Je Jehovah's name. And I'll always be grateful that I learned about Jehovah's name and you know but I and I'm and I love the friends I love the people I just cannot um, be loyal to a body of men that you know can't be honest in my mind they're not honest so I don't know that's like giving you a, a reference. Sorry, Al. Right. I'd right. 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 like to read you a reference from a 99 Watchtower. You mentioned the year 2012 a few times is when you felt that things had changed from the governing body's point of view. Yeah, and then they came out with the new Bible, and which I found some things that were disturbing. But, yeah, anyway... Yeah, it's so this is before this is before that, right? This is in '99. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll just read you this reference. It's July fifteenth, Watchtower '99. And back then, Diana, there was a group of former witnesses that had a method of operation, and the governing body wanted to warn the organization about them in, in this Watchtower. So here's the paragraph. I just want you to, to think about this compared to what okay. sounds like some of the things you're hearing in the meeting okay. with, with the group throughout this last month. Okay. It says, today, in 99, apostates who deviate from the truth verbally beat the faithful and discreet slave. They deny that the end of this wicked system of things is near, and they criticize the spiritually alert slave class for maintaining a sense of urgency among Jehovah's people. Such apostates succeed in subverting the faith of some or putting them down a different path, including spiritual shipwreck. Let's apply the Catholic dilemma to this. The Watchtower derides apostates who verbally beat the faithful and discreet slave, in effect biting the hand that has been feeding them spiritually. What if the Pope said the same thing? Oh, well, that wouldn't apply, says our proverbial J.W. Elder, because the Pope is not the faithful and discreet slave, and he doesn't feed the flock spiritually because he teaches false doctrine. Okay, but isn't that the issue with the governing body? Haven't they been teaching false doctrines for decades? If a group of men claim to represent Jehovah God, but consistently mislead the flock with false teachings and beat down anyone whom, who complains... Are they a faithful and discreet slave? Remember, Jesus didn't just talk about a faithful slave in Matthew 24, 45 to 51. But if ever that evil slave says in his heart, my master is delaying, and he starts to beat his fellow slaves and to eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect and in an hour that he does not know, and he will punish him with the greatest severity and will assign him his place with the hypocrites. There is where his weeping and the gnashing of his teeth will be. Matthew 24, 47 to 51. So I'd I just like to point out that for decades now, and even before 99, there are references to the 80s and 70s and 60s. Oftentimes what apostates will focus on are these two areas. Number one is attacking the imperfections of the governing body mm -hmm. as imperfect men. Mm -hmm. And number two, like that reference brought out, they criticize them for urgency concerning the end of the system. This is a straw man argument. The criticism is not that they are promoting the urgency of the times, because the Bible does that. The criticism is that they are instilling a false sense of urgency by promoting dates that have failed to come true and chronology that kept having to be reworked 
all the while either failing to accept responsibility for their failures, or even worse, blaming the rank and file for the failed expectations. Now, I just want to point that out, Diana, because as we said, you're welcome to, to make whatever decision you'd like. Yeah. But please, please be careful, because what I'm hearing is you've associated with this group for about a month, and your heart is getting caught up in it after just a month. And I'm hearing that you feel like you rushed into things with Jehovah's Witnesses in the past. Mm -hmm. But are you, in effect, doing the same thing again? It's only been a month. Can you really back up everything that this former elder in Canada is saying? Why isn't he in the Well, he's not saying it. He's, the Bible's saying it. We're just all talking about Scripture. There's no real leader. There, there here's, is. Another, here's another question to think about. So if the governing body is not the faithful and discreet slave, then who is? Because Christians. We know Christians waiting for Jesus and his kingdom. All Christians. Two-thirds of the earth. Okay, so you believe that everyone who is a Christian is the faithful and discreet slave? A one that is a true Christian, yeah. Okay. And just because you have a cross on your neck doesn't mean you're a Christian. Or just because you say, I believe in Christ, makes you a Christian. I mean, you have to have works to show that you believe in Jesus and Jehovah God. I mean, I'm not negating the fact that there needs to be a ministry or anything like that. I mean, that's all important. I know we're all awaiting for the new paradise earth. You know, we're all waiting okay. for that. I just, and, and I truly could follow anyone who is infallible and man, because we all are men and imperfect. And, but, um, Admit when you're wrong. If, if, if you're um, the intermediary between us and Jehovah, if you're the spokesperson, then you should get it right. If you're infallible and get it wrong, then admit it and say I'm wrong. But in my mind, you can't have it both ways. To me, my mediator to Jehovah is Jesus. And he's not wrong. He never lies. He, you read the scriptures, and there's no people will tell you, oh, well, there's so many confusions in the Bible, but God doesn't lie. God okay. is and forever. And so I'm just stuck, Chaz. I, I might be rushing into this, and maybe so. Maybe a year from now I would be. But unfortunately, the way that this organization is, I'm disfellowshipped. So nobody will talk to me and quench my desire for answering questions that I have because to question um, is a bad thing. You know, and I talked with Al about this and, you know, he was saying something about putting something on where we can get together and talk and I thought that was great and then the next thing is I'm talking with three elders, you know, and I'm going to be disfellowshipped. So there it is. I I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, I guess I could humbly come back and for a year and not talk to anybody for a year. It's been that way for me anyway. I'm here all by myself in Glenwood. I, I don't see anybody outside outside of meetings. You know, Veronica invites me over once in a while, but that's it. I, I haven't had any close association with the organization for a very long time. So yeah. it, it wasn't that difficult, really. Okay, so just a, just a few more questions to make sure we got it. Um, so with this other group you're meeting with... Um, What's your what's your plan with the group down the road to, to keep meeting continually to yeah. to be known as part of that group? You want to? Well, the only do you feel like this is the truth. This is I, I feel it. like the Bible is the truth, and the and I could I could study on my own, but 
I think that we're scripturally bound to um, find association with fellow believers. I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that the whole reason for Jehovah's organization is to fellowship with like-minded ones? But I could study the Bible on my own. I have every opportunity and every resource at hand at biblehub.com and you know and I and I have the JW library and I've used both I can I have studied on my own chest for a very long time and that's where I've gotten my knowledge it's not uh, we haven't had bible congregational bible studies forever I don't I didn't even know who my group leader was until I was told by somebody. I can't even remember who told me. And then I had Al come, and so I, I feel like I've just been tossed around. And I I can choose to zoom in with this group, or I can choose not to. It It's not like they take attendance. They just, hi, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. You know? <laughs> so, but I... I I study the Bible. I I delve into it constantly. You know, I so I I mean I I love the inner linear. I use that all the time. The interlinear Bible and Strong's yeah. Concordance and Ungers and you know I I've done all that because that's what I used to do and I I miss that and yeah. I was hoping I'd get that from um, the whole body but I'm just getting rules and things I have to do and I'm not good enough I don't measure up um, I, I I can't I, I don't know <laughs> can I ask a question Diana yeah sure you know uh, first I want to uh, just applaud your your desire to to dig in the scriptures that's, that's, that's important that's how one builds faith yeah. and get to know more about God and he draws closer to God that way when they're drawn close to him he, he asks them to he draws close to them if if say uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm just shooting from the head uh, say if we've we, aside of our meetings and we have our meeting, meetings and you know we we uh, just wanted to maybe have like an arrangement of, like a Bible study with you uh, would you, would you do something like that? And like someone studies with you. You got all these questions. You want some clarifications. You want some uh, Bible teachings, and desist from meeting with that group, or you would. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that study, but I'll also <laughs> be, you know, if if that was available and option to you. What, yeah, if it would, wasn't, if you didn't use any of the Watchtower information, if it was just a pure Bible study, yeah. I would do it. I wouldn't want to study uh, a book along with it that the or that the governing body puts out, because I think it would bias the scriptures. So, what would it take to to restore your your trust in the governing body at this point? For them to apologize for anything that they got wrong. Have you have you have you searched for that? Because I don't have an exact reference. No, I haven't searched, honestly. You know, you know, Diana, I think I think you've been told something. I may be wrong, but I think you've been told something and I'm just really worried. I'm really worried that you're taking someone's word for it. No. And, no, I've done studying, uh, Chaz. I mean, take take Second Corinthians five twenty, for instance. In, in, our, in our copy of the Bible, they put in, we're substituting for, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to read what we have. And I, I just found that. I mean, because I do, I compare all of the translations, like, because when you go in the ministry, you say, well, we'll read this from your bi your copy of the Bible, right? And so I do a lot of comparing so that I wouldn't be caught, 
you know, unawares of what they were talking about. So like in 2 Corinthians 5.20, and also in the, in the 1984 edition, it is not there. So this new edition of the Bible that we have, It says, therefore, we are ambassadors, substituting for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. They've added substituting. I've gone back to the Greek, and there is no Greek for substituting, for that word substituting. It should read, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. We're not substituting for Christ. It's like they're trying to demote the position of Jesus. That's what first started me just questioning everything. It's not that I listened to them and then decided I had these questions, and then I was hearing other people had these questions. And that's where I found th this um, group, is because they had issues also. And so that's, that's what it is, Chaz. It's not because I've been um, trying to find a reason to um, be negative towards the organization. It's just the things I've been hearing through these monthly meetings on Zoom with the governing body. I can't agree with it. I just can't agree. So that, that's all. I just... Okay. So I just well, I just You're don't sure think their focus is in the right place. I told Al that I just think that they've taken the focus away from Jesus's position. So anyway. So I'm trying to find um, trying to find the reference because uh, you know the governing body is not like the Pope. No, I understand. <laughs> yeah, he says, I represent Christ, and anything I say is what Christ says, and I can't sin, and I can't make mistakes. And Oh, no, you know, I, no I know. I understand yeah. You probably remember in 1914, some of the prominent brothers thought that would be the end, and they were wrong, and they had to apologize. And, uh, there have been times there were expectations that, that didn't pan out, and they realized that was not based on scripture. We got carried away with things. But just the fact that the governing body is willing to update understanding, the fact they're willing to update it in front of everyone, them saying, look, what we what we used to teach, we've realized that's not, that doesn't make sense based off all the whole picture now that we're mm -hmm. farther down the road. So any time a religion or a body comes up and says, look, we have to update this because we didn't catch this last time. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine mm -hmm. the Pope ever doing that? That never happened. He has to pretend everything he has ever done was perfect. Actually, the Pope has apologized on occasion for wrongdoing by the Church. Not just the Pope, but Catholic bishops have also apologized, for example, for their failure to handle child sexual abuse by the clergy. Maybe they don't apologize often enough or quickly enough, but to say they don't apologize is false. However, has the governing body ever apologized for its mishandling of thousands of cases of child sexual abuse? I'm not aware of any apology. What I do know is that if you talk openly about the child sexual abuse cases that the organization is losing in country after country, you will be disfellowshipped, or as Jesus put it, he starts to be his fellow slaves. But every time the governing body explains some new understanding, essentially they're saying, we were wrong. That's not accurate anymore. So as an organization, let's look back at the scriptures. The naivete of this brother is inexcusable given his position. I could spend a couple of hours going through some of the more notorious changes but we don't need to do that to make the point that Diane is justifiably complaining about. Did you know that for a time the organization did not allow a woman to divorce her husband for sexual immorality if the sin was that he had sex with another man or, or with a barnyard animal? 
No kidding. Look it up. Questions from Readers, January 1st, 1972, Watchtower. When they finally got it right, duh, they ha had this to say. This clearly marks a correction in the view expressed on previous occasions in the columns of this magazine, but faithful adherence to what the scriptures actually say requires it. That's from the 72 Watchtower, December 15th, page 768. There is no apology there for the harm done to who knows how many women who were stuck with a man who was cheating on them. Then there's the issue of organ transplants. Watchtower, 1967, November 15th, pages 702 to 704. This little excerpt, sustaining one's life by means of the body or part of the body of another human would be cannibalism, a practice abhorrent to all civilized people. Watchtower 1980, March 15th, page 31. There is no biblical command pointedly forbidding the taking in of other human tissue. It is a matter of personal decision. There is no apology here, nor even an acknowledgement that this is a change. How many Jehovah's Witnesses died in the 13 years between 1967 and 1980 because they refused an organ transplant that would have extended their lives, believing they were pleasing God. If you want to research it yourself, go to the Watchtower Library and enter Understanding Clarified and scan through the long list of changes and see how very wrong this elder's perception is. Right, but then it <clears throat> seems like they manipulate the scriptures to fit into what their new light is. I'll, I'll tell you, Diana, how the governing body works on this, because when I was at Bethel, I, I met all the brothers on the governing body, actually, and I had lunch with them, and I've got to talk with them. I, I asked them one time, how how is New Light come about? You know, because that's an interesting thought. Out here in Utah, it's not like, mm -hmm. you know, the inner workings. And, and I'll tell you what they said. He said, we have no visions, we have no dreams. He said, we're like you, we're Bible students. And they said each of them has a regular routine of Bible study, just like we do. And every now and then, when we look into the scriptures, something may not match up with another piece of something we thought we understood. And when that happens, to just one of the brothers in the governing body, they take that note, and they meet once a week, and when those brothers meet, they share these notes of, you know, brothers, I noticed this in my reading last time. And I'm not sure that this makes sense according to what our previous understanding was. And then as a body, they discuss it. They make that a focus of intense Bible study. And then they'll vote on, do we agree that this is the new understanding then based off what we're researching and what we're understanding from the Bible? And if even one brother votes against it, they don't make the announcement. They table it. They wait. And sometimes new understanding will be on the table for months or years until the entire governing body sees and agrees as a body that, you know, this is obvious at this point. This is what Jehovah is directing. So... That sounds you know, pretty confusing. <laughs> it sounds like they get pretty confused. <laughs> well, you remember they're discreet. So never will you have one brother of the governing body announce this is the new understanding. See, only when they act as a body unanimously can they say without a doubt that this is clearly direction from Jehovah. Mm. Hold on. That bears repeating. He says, based on conversations he had with the governing body members when he was serving at Bethel, that only when they act as a body unanimously can they say without a doubt that this is clearly direction from Jehovah. Does he not see the gaping hole in this statement? Let me illustrate it with a real piece of new light. Remember that every piece of new light you are about to see was arrived at when they were unanimously acting as a body, and so each piece of new light was clearly direction from Jehovah. The men of Sodom will be resurrected. 1879 Watchtower, 
will not be resurrected. 1952 Watchtower will be resurrected. 1965 Watchtower will not be resurrected. 1988 Watchtower will be resurrected. Live Forever Book Early Editions will not be resurrected. Live Forever Book Later Editions will be resurrected. Insight Book. This is called Drinking the Kool-Aid. Because they're imperfect men individually, right? Yeah. So I don't I don't want to get off into the weeds with these different things, but right. I, I guess the main question is, Diana, if if you were to make a list of things that either you'd like to research or you disagreed with or you thought was not true, if you made a list, however long it is, would you be willing to to really go over that? And I, I have to tell you, the Watchtower publications, we have to trust as elders that those are Bible-based. We have to, as elders. We represent this organization. Understand. And we have to personally determine that ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to accept a study well, with maybe a couple elders just to clear up any confusion you might have or questions you had or why is this like that, like Al asked earlier, if you were to accept that, would that cause you to discontinue meeting with this other group? Or do you feel like you're determined to continue meeting with this other group? Oh, I think I would still meet with them. Okay. Yeah, to, honestly. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy discussing scripture. All right. Thank you for being honest with us. We... Mm -hmm. Apparently, these elders consider that Diana can still be saved quote unquote, and are even willing to discuss the Bible with her to clear up her doubts. This is pretty remarkable in my experience. It is usually difficult even to get them to crack the Bible open to reason on something. But what is notable in all this is the requirement that she stop studying the Bible with a group of fellow Christians, independently of organizational arrangements. Bear in mind that she is not joining another church. She is merely studying the Bible with a group of friends. Can you condemn someone to eternal death? Because that is what witnesses consider disfellowshipping to be, a death sentence unless the sinner repents in time, just because she chooses to study the Bible with fellow Christians. Again, she is not joining another religion. She is just studying the Bible with friends. Apparently, you can disfellowship someone for studying the Bible with others. In fact, according to the rigid rules of the Organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, these elders see no other option, as we will soon witness. You know, as elders, we, we follow high standards that Jehovah gives mm -hmm. for the congregation. And, and we have specific things we have to figure out. But that was the purpose of this meeting tonight. Is we just want to see your motive and your intent and all of those things. Yeah, well, and, uh, my motive is not to bash the organization <laughs> by any means. We understand that. Uh, but, uh, we don't feel that way either. Okay. Uh, well, that's it, good. It, it, it comments didn't come across that way. It's just your understanding of things and how you yeah. get to misunderstand a lot of things as well. So. Yeah, I just have... Um, I actually did make a list. Yeah, it's like that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't mind, Diana, I think um, if the three of us were going to jump in a Breakout room, is that okay, brothers? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you going to do that? Chess, are you going to create that? Because I don't know how. I don't know what I Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we're going to jump in. Well, actually, I'm going to put you in the waiting room, Diana, and then we'll pop you back in in just a minute. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being patient with us. Sure, no problem. Sorry to put you there for so long. Um, so, so you know, as, as congregation elders, we have a heavy responsibility, and we have to uh, look closely at Bible principles and Jehovah's direction and things. Uh, the decision that the, the brothers have come to is that because of your determination to continue associating with another religious group, that essentially and scripturally you have made known that fact that you intend to remain with it. Well, it's, a, it, the, it's not really a religion. 
It's a bi it's a Bible group. Yeah, and those things are included, but because of that, the brothers are not taking an action against you, and neither is the organization, but because of your stand, you have disassociated yourself from the governing body, the organization, and from that channel, from Jehovah. And that's based off a of scripture in 1 John chapter 2, and verse 19. What a lie! He says... The brothers are not taking an action against you. What an absolute and bald-faced lie. You don't stand up on the platform and make an announcement that is indistinguishable from the announcement made when someone is being disfellowshipped, knowing that this public statement is a sign to all the congregation to shun the individual and still get to claim you are not taking any action against the person. Liars. Jesus said of men like this, why do you not understand what I am saying? Because you cannot listen to my word. You are from your father, the devil, and you wish to do the desires of your father. That one was a murderer when he began, and he did not stand fast in the truth, because truth is not in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks according to his own disposition, because he is a liar and the father of the lie. Because I, on the other hand, tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Who of you convicts me of sin? If I speak truth, why is it that you do not believe me? The one who is from God listens to the sayings of God. That is why you do not listen, because you are not from God. John eight forty three to 47 Why does Jesus bring up murder when referring to the devil and to his human children? Because these men were literally going to murder God's son, and they did. But surely that does not apply to these elders. Let us again go to Jesus for the answer. You heard that it was said, you must not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who keeps on looking at a woman so as to have a passion for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5, 27, 28. The principle he established here is that desiring is doing. These men believe that disfellowshipped, disassociated ones who do not repent will die eternally at Armageddon. If their decision to disfellowship is unjust, then it is unlawful. And that means, in their heart, they are murdering her. And if you notice there, it, it says, they went out from us, but they were not of our sort. For if they had been of our sort, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it might be shown that not all are of our sort. So, again, so this when, is not the body. When you mean, so when you say sort, what are you saying? Because um, if you're a Christian and I'm a Christian, we're of the same sort. So are you saying the sort as Jehovah's organization, the governing body? Uh, Diana, we are of the sort that follows Jehovah's direction through the governing body. Okay. And we have to make that clear stand. That, that clears it up. Okay. Yeah. And, and scripturally, uh, the Bible says even in Paul's day, there were some that, that chose a different channel, and that was their decision. But as a body of elders, that decision had consequences for those in the congregation. So we just want to let you know that um, based off what we talked about tonight and, and your clear answers, we wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. No. Um, the announcement will be made at the next midweek meeting that you are no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. But we do hope we do hope that you can uh, make adjustments to come back. And, and Sky had a had a, a point to share with you on that. Okay. Yeah, that you know Jehovah would love to have you back. You know, well, well in my friends. in my mind, I've never left. So I've left the organization. I haven't left Jehovah. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah. left Jehovah's organization. Quote. Right. Not Jehovah. I always will love Jehovah. Just want to be clear. And Jehovah, he would love to have you back in his organization, and the friends, of course, would love, you know, to have you back as well. But again. As we discussed and as Chaz kind of brought out, 
if you were to come back, we, we wouldn't want to have any connection to, you know, other, other religious, um, other religious things, right? Other, um, it's just the Bible. <laughs> right. So, um, but yeah, then yeah. Uh, we would yeah. Uh, definitely love to. Okay, fair yeah, enough. So you're saying guys. if I just if I just get information from the Watchtower Bible Tract and Society, then I can come back. But if I choose to do research with any other source of Bible aids, then I'm no longer of the in the same channel. Is what you're saying? Because that's all I'm doing is having a Bible study outside of the organization, per se, because there is no such uh, medium um, that I can go to that way. There is no Bible study that the organization provides. It's always with their literature. That's it. So if I can just add a few words. Uh, your statement about choosing the channel is correct. Mm -hmm. So Jehovah, and we feel that Jehovah is using uh, the present, the going body, and this organization as the only channel of that he communicates to his people. And anything outside of that would be going off the channel, like you were saying. So what Sky meant to say was, if, if you desire to come back and be one of the rules, and this is again, that would mean you'd have to cut off any other channel that you may be feeding on or getting information from and to follow the channel that we feel that you're using this organization to provide the spiritual food at this time. So that's, that's just the biggest difference right there. Uh, for you, uh, Diana. And again, just that that one choice that you selected to just continue with this Bible study group that kind of showed us on your own merit that, yeah, you're willing to go that way and then uh, come back this way. So uh, we, we thank you uh, for your, your, your comments. And thank you again be so frank with us and honest and open. Thank you all for listening. We, we really hope, Diana, that uh, if at some point you've broken off contact with other Bible study groups and, and build your trust again in a governing body, we hope that if you can do that, please please come back and contact one of the elders. That would be steps towards reinstatement. Hold on. Build your trust in the governing body? Isn't Jesus the channel Jehovah is using? Isn't the Bible the Word of God? Does the term governing body appear anywhere in Scripture? How about the word trust? There are verses which talk about trusting God or putting our trust in God. But is there a verse that speaks of trusting men, especially for salvation? Well, there is this one. Do not put your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man who cannot bring salvation. And this one seems particularly relevant to our discussion. He also told this illustration to some who trusted in their own righteousness and who considered others as nothing. Luke 18, 9. Hmm. They trusted in their own righteousness and considered others as nothing. These men do not talk about trusting Jehovah nor Jesus, but of trusting the men of the governing body. So the governing body is truly substituting for Christ. Consider these words. Do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. And you are that temple, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. So, Christians, the anointed of God, God's children, are the temple of God. 
Now consider these words. Let no one lead you astray in this way, because it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction. He stands in opposition and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he sits down in the temple of God, publicly showing himself to be a God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. If a small group of men claim to be God's channel and requires the members making up the temple of God to trust them and punishes with a sentence of death all who refuse to trust them or obey them, are they not acting like a god? Worship in Greek is proskunio, which means to bow down and kiss the ground. It is an act of submission. Is this not what the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses is now demanding on pain of death? Remember, they teach that the disfellowshipped will die eternally at Armageddon. And you can do that at any time. See, the brothers did not push you out of the organization. This was a, a choice that you made that showed disassociation. So we hope you understand the difference between that and disfellowshipping. They're different. No. However, okay, so we are similar. We are similar in that you're no longer part of the organization. Okay. And because of that, members may choose not to associate with you. So, again, like Al said, we hope that's clear, and we thank you for meeting with us tonight. And we hope to have you back. We really do. For those of you who are watching this and are not Jehovah's Witnesses, let me assure you that from my 40 years of experience as an elder, there is no difference between these two terms as it pertains to the way Diana is going to be treated by the members of her congregation. In fact, what is read from the platform is a simple statement that merely says that Diana is no longer a member of the Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. Whether she was disfellowshipped for some sin or disassociated because she wanted to study the Bible with some friends, the same words will be read. So anyone sitting in the audience will not know what went on because this is all done behind closed doors. It's all in secret. All they will know is that Diana has been disfellowshipped and that they must now shun her because the only thing read from the platform is the phrase used when someone is disfellowshipped. Well, I appreciate you not cut me off with this fellowship. I hope I hope the friends understand that I'm not taboo that they can say hi at least. You know, they don't have to cross get on the other side of the road and avoid me <laughs> type thing. Is yeah, it? well I want to we want to make clear that the two things are separate because disfellowshipping is when someone makes a mistake and they're expelled from the congregation because of the severity of that mistake and lack oh, of repentance, right? I see, okay. But disassociation is when a baptized witness makes a decision that they're going a different direction with a different organization or Bible study group, or they can say, I do not want to be a witness anymore. No, I, I want to be a witness for Jehovah. I just don't, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so they're different, but we want to make sure you understand that it is very similar status in the friend, in the eyes of the congregation, and that it's made as an announcement. You're no longer a witness, and because of that, I mean, the friends may choose to associate or not associate, just as if someone were disfellowshipped. So we want to make sure you understand that. And we, it can be reversed. It can be reversed, but that's up to you okay. and the decision you want to take down the road. Okay. Is that cl does that make sense? I, I don't want any confusion as we, as we leave. No, I mean, that's different than you announcing that I've been disfellowshipped versus that I no longer choose to be a Jehovah's Witness. You're saying that that announcement has a different level of um, I don't know, punishment with it or, you know. Well, they're essentially the same. 
And the reason why is because it's warning the congregation that uh, this individual does not have faith in the channel that the organization is using. And because of that, the friends can make their, their decision based off what they know of the scriptures. But they, but they, won't, they won't know that part. They won't know that. So that's where the announcement comes in. And the announcement will simply be that you are no longer, Diana Weatherall is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So okay. that's as simple as it is. But okay. Anything else, brothers? Go ahead, Al. Oh, not for me. Good. I, I just want to show my appreciation for the meeting with us every time we, we call, you called you upon to, to meet with us. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Sky. Thank you, Chaz. <laughs> Thank you, and we hope to hear back from you again soon and see the adjustments needed so we can patch things up again. Jehovah is eager to have you back in his organization. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, okay, Diana, I hope you have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, okay, you as well. Bye. 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 Diana has set a great example for all of us. She's not afraid to um, carry the cross, as Jesus said. She's not afraid of the shame that comes with it because she knows that there is glory from God. And so any reproach heaped upon her by men and women, even though they are close friends or even family, is worth the cost, the price of ho grabbing hold of the prize of everlasting life. It's a good example for all of us to think about if we are in a similar situation. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been beneficial. And I would like to thank everyone again for the support they give this channel, both through financial contributions as well as the resources they offer, and the support they also offer through uh, emails and comments of encouragement. Mm -hmm.